Do we have any knowledge of what this function is? It's a this call, so we know a this call is a class member function. So an object is calling uh, this function. See, the first um, argument is a this pointer. That's how this call works. So v6 equals this, variable 6 equals this. Well, what is this? No idea. Is there any way we can find out? Does it take a return? It takes an, an int return. It does. So let's scroll back up. Where were we? It's accessing the index of the matrix array. It's doing some bullshit. It's popping the matrix. The result is zero, zero v6 plus offset 2c. Uh, not sure. No idea, to be honest. So I'm afraid that maybe we're not going to find this uh, matrix. So let's keep looking, because I hate to give up. Oh, we're already in the second one. God damn it. All right, so it's, an, it's a matrix array. We know that. So let's look at that matrix array. Let's double click on it. There's our matrix array. 16 floats in a row. But aren't there supposed to be more matrices here? Uh -huh. This is one of those things. Let's debug and see what happens. Are more matrices going to pop up here when we... I have no idea. Uh, attach to process. We are going to attach to AC client and press OK. So now this is the uh, dynamic analysis piece. Uh, I have a special desktop I like to use. Uh, debugging one. Thank you. So we're attached. Let's just press continue. So the game's executing. I already showed you how to use Visual Studio Debugger. It's very similar. You have play, you have pause, you have stop. If you press stop without uh, going to detach first, you will crash the process. And then you have, uh, let's get a interesting, remember I said there's a matrix here. I wonder if there's a matrix down here. And that, this information is populated now. It is just data though. All right, so this is one of those instances where the cheat engine is probably going to be a little bit better than Ida because we can see this stuff uh, live. So we know that the matrix array is uh, at this address right here. Okay, so let's look in cheat engine. Let's go to memory viewer. And uh, let's right click display type, select float. And we want to go to address, paste that address in. So here's the matrix array thing we were just looking at. There are no matrices down here. Um, so. We are not moving our mouse, right? Nope. And the shit's still going crazy. What happens when we move our mouse? Oh, now we see some stuff moving up here. So let's scroll up. So this is the interesting guy. Got my optus name right there. Uh, I just saw that. So when we move our mouse here, we see everything moving. When we stop moving, it all stops. So we can basically say, you know, this is our area for our fur our matrix here. It's always interesting. Scroll up. Okay, this stuff has nothing to do with matrix, okay? Nothing. And then down here, this has nothing to do with matrix because it's constantly moving. Although, we have said that's a matrix. So, the game can have several matrices. That could be, um, for instance, that could be the model matrix, okay? So, when it, when it, uh, draws an enemy model on the screen or does any model math, it has to use the model matrix, okay? And then now it has to draw a grenade. So now it's going to load that grenade's model matrix or maybe even build that matrix, but it's using the same address 
to house this matrix because there's not multiple threads. There's only one matrix being acted on at a time. So that's what I think that is. That's going to be our model uh, matrix, 99% on that one. And then so somewhere in here is is our model view projection matrix and probably the projection matrix. Remember in the other tutorial, it did list our coordinates um, near the matrix as well, or maybe even in the matrix, I forget. But so my X coordinate is 355, my Y coordinate is 353. And I can already see, uh, look, right here, right here. So that's pretty good. We're in the right spot. Always try to figure out where does the matrix begin and where does it end. Uh, I'm going to say, look how big this number is. That's not how a matrix works, OK? It's too big. So it could, maybe the matrix starts here. Probably not. I bet you it starts right here. All right, so let's get the address of that. Um, so this is edit. Oops. No, this is 501AA0 um, uh, AA8, actually. So let's actually reset this. 501AA8. Click OK. Now. Now we're aligned properly. There's that big number. There's some zeros probably for padding. And then here's the uh, thing here. It's actually too wide. One, two, three, four across. So we have one, two, three, four. So it's 16 floats. That's a matrix. And perhaps this is a matrix as well. Oh, and look at that. It just changed maps oh but we're still in the right spot okay now this is where we may want to use i need to get this address 501a88 that's correct we want to press Control d and go to our buddy the data destructor and i even have a structure called matrix start here um whoops matrix start Oh, this is interesting. So I've already defined some matrices. You know what? Fuck that. Let's use reclass. It's so much cleaner. I wonder how many processes we could attach to uh, to this game without it crashing. Okay, AC client. Uh, that address was right there. And let's make this a modify, a matrix. And then let's add... Um, another matrix. We need to increase the size matrix and matrix. So pop all these suckers open. Uh, that looks pretty good, right? So let's check the neg uh, positive one when we look straight up. I do see positive one in the bottom two matrices. And if I scroll all the way down, I see negative one. Well, how about that? Interesting, the top matrix, the first one, uh, does not seem to contain um, a negative one. But taking into consideration, all right, just for fun, let's see, let's add some more data. Let's add another matrix, um, 501B68. And let's see. Because we don't know how many matrices are in this array here. So is this also a matrix? Uh, looking all the way up, I see positive 1. Look all the way down. I actually see a 1. It's negative 1 when I look up, interestingly. Uh, weird. Is this salt cube backwards? Is all the way down positive 1 and all the way up is negative 1? Oh my god, it is. Yeah, it's opposite of uh, the last tutorial. All right, so these all look like valid matrices. So this is, again, in that you're in that position where if I know my world screen works perfectly, I'll just plug every matrix in that looks good, and then I'll see if the ESP works. Honestly, brute forcing it like that is going to be faster than me trying to figure it out.
Uh, so let's just go back into my hack and let's see my matrix, the GL MVP matrix is, fi is 501 AE8. Is that, that's this one. I thought it was going to be this one. But anyway, hey, so that technique worked. But again, it does take some trial and error and it does take some guessing. All right, so let's get back to uh, debugging, uh, showing you how to debug with Ida. So where was that function we were looking at? So let's go to View, Open Subviews, Functions, and we want to filter um, by, what was it, Decrease Health, were we calling it? Aha, Decrease Health, okay. So we now want to view... We are viewing it as text. I love graph view um, because these conditional jumps, it just makes it so much easier to understand. So find, we want to just look at decrease health. We're going to right click on this and we are going to click uh, add breakpoint. And so now we have a breakpoint. So now let's uh, shoot somebody and hit the breakpoint. Or, you know what, let's just do it on myself again because then we know it's the local player. Oh yeah, so breakpoint was definitely hit. Let's look here. So here we are in the function. We have all, we can have all the normal windows that we always have, but on top of that, uh, we have the general register window, EAX, EBX, ECX, all that good shit. And then we have the, uh, the flags, the uh, flag register. Um, and then we have the stack view. So as you're learning to reverse engineer, understanding the stack is probably the absolute hardest part. Uh, but Ida makes it very easy. It's got this great way of displaying it. We can see... Um, so we're stopped on this first piece here. So we can see uh, in, uh, weapon index is being passed as function in EAX. So... Let's look. What's an EAX? EAX is 8. So is 8 the weapon we were using? Let's assume uh, grenade is weapon index 8. Uh, inventory stat array is passed in an EBX. So now let's look in an EBX. 9C, A7, AC. So that should be uh, where our health is, I'm assuming. So let's look at health, uh, 97A7B0. Remember, we, yeah, B0 minus 4 equals AC, right? Yeah, that's correct. So uh, this is the stat array, and if you add 4 to it, you get health, and if you add 8 to it, you get uh, armor. So we know that's good. And then int damage is being passed on the stack. Now, chances are, uh, here's the stack. Here's the bottom of the stack. It's kind of hard to understand. So this is the top of the stack. Like, this is the top and this is the bottom. But actually, you can see that this is the bottom of the stack because it's a lower address. And as you move down, the address uh, size increases. So the bottom's here, the top's up here. We can look um, at EBP and ESP. This is basically your stack frame. So ESP is your extended stack pointer. Remember before uh, Windows was 32-bit, it was 16-bit. Uh, so there used to only be uh, SP, BP, DI, and SI. And when they moved to 32-bit, they made the registers uh, prefaced with the E for extended. So the extended stack pointer is 18F850. So that's the bottom of the stack or the top of it, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Uh, and EBP is 18F97C. So 18F97C is F97C. Oops. So there is the top of the stack, and here is the bottom at EBP. So, um, and then you have EIP, 
which is the instruction pointer. So that's showing you where your current uh, place is. So 429C20, uh, yep, that's it. And it even tells us that this is we are in decreased health. And then we have uh, EDI uh, ESI. EDI a lot is like an index and ESI is like a base pointer that offsets are added to a lot of the time. And then EDX, ECX, EBX, and EDX, those are truly just like general purpose registers uh, for arithmetic and that kind of thing. So what we can do here, we can, as always, we can execute every instruction, meaning step into, we can execute uh, a, or we can jump over. So step into, step over, and step out of. They just call it differently in here. And then we have uh, run until cursor is found. This is a control flow is nice. Uh, compare EDI, which is damage, uh, to, to max int. So if jump, if not zero, to this location. So uh, jump, if not zero, depends on the uh, zero flag which is zero right now. So if you compare max int to EDI and they are the same, it's going to set the zero flag to zero. So if it is not zero, if they are not the same, it's going to jump to here. Otherwise, it's going to automatically kill you, set your health. Remember, it's going to set EBX plus four, which is your health, to zero, and EBX plus eight, which is your armor, to zero. Otherwise, it's going to go down this path. <laughs> So that's the general idea behind it. We need to do this all over again and hurt ourselves again. All right, so again, we can execute every instruction. And as we execute each instruction, we can see the changes being made over here. So sub ESP, this is basically a function prologue okay it's pushing ebp on the test stack so it's saving the stack frame from the other from the calling function it's moving esp into ebp so now it's setting up the stack frame it's anding esp to set up the stack frame and it's it's i'm not sure why it's anding but uh it's it's subtracting it's basically setting up stack frame and moving it into another location it's pushing ESI to save. There's no call here. So it's it's pushing it to save it. It's saving ESI and EDI. So check that out. Maybe that's the old stack. ESI and EDI are the old stack. Let's see. Remember the, uh, the user purge uh, cleans, the, resets the stack before... Um, it returns. So pop EDI, pop ESI, which are right here. So it is. It's resetting the stack frame before it returns, just like it's supposed to. So function prologue, function epilogue. So just to, sh I'll show you some more though, and to explain what's going on. So it's subtracting hex 138 from ESP. So we're going to step over, step into that. We see that the stack frame changed. We ha now have push e ESI. So ESI is right here, 9CA6B8. Now we're going to step over that, and now we see that it just pushed that uh, address onto the stack, 9CA6B8. So there it is. And what this is basically showing you is debug 35. I believe that's a segment. So let's look at the program segmentation uh, and expand that and see now we have all these dynamic link libraries added. We have some, some debug, which basically means that only while you are debugging were these segments visible. So these areas were allocated um, at, during execution of the program. We are now going to move EAX into ESI. All right, so now we're at move EAX into ESI. So ES, EAX is right here, which is eight. And so eight should end up in ESI when we step over. And now we see that that's exactly what happened. Um, 
So basically, you just need to get used to, you have to compare what you see going on in the code to what's happening to the registers and what's happening to the stack. Uh, we are going to multiply 12a by ESI. Remember, 12a was the size of the weapon structure. And we're going to multiply it by ESI, which was the index, um, which was 8, which, remember, was passed into EAX right here. And then it was moved from EAX into ESI, now multiplied by 12a. So let's step over that guy. And we now see that ESI is 950. When a multiplication is done, it's stored back in the uh, destination register. Now we're going to push EDI on the stack, 9CA6B8. So we'll look at the stack here, and now we're going to uh, step over that, and now we're seeing that that's right here. We are going to add the weapon array offset to ESI, and maybe we want to see what is the weapon array offset. Uh, right click it, jump to operand, and we see it's zero. Now we need to step again. We remember uh, we can do comments by pressing, not so not semicolon. If you do semicolon, you enter a repeatable comment in case you have comments that you use all the time. Or you can do a uh, regular colon, and you can say uh, right here, um, compare uh, damage to max int. So you do have to have separate comments for e uh, pseudocode and then uh, the regular disassembly view. And we can move all these things uh, totally modular. These are, these are the nodes again. So you can move these guys around if that helps you understand. You can also change the color. If this was a really important function, I would change the color. And that way, uh, it would jump out at me. Another thing you can do, if, like, if this is something you, you're like, okay, I don't ever want my code to jump into here, so I'll, I'll make that red. Like, okay, so when I'm writing my hack, I want to do a byte hack up here so that I never end up in here. This could be like the function that does the anti-cheat, something like that. Other thing you can do is uh, rename it. You can click right here and call it. Let's call this uh, max int kill you. There we go.